Jamie Dornan, uh, you play serial killer Paul Spector in the series The Fall, which uh, streams on Netflix. Uh, playing such a, a dark, violent character, uh, you know, is it emotionally taxing to get into character? Um, yeah, it is actually. It is. It's um, it's it's it, it's tough, you know, because you can't like relax. I never relax when I'm playing him. In a way, you know, you always. It's so thankfully, thankfully, it's so far from my own personal character that um. I always feel that I'm having to, um, you know, uh, stay within him. I mean, I have my moments, like, you know, when I can find relief from him um, when we're filming, I will. And, you know, as soon as I hear cut, I will try to take myself out of it. But I think the overall process of playing him over a three-month period, four-month period, you know, um, it is. It's 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 draining because you know I love it, but but it is, it is um, to stay in the headspace of someone who thinks the way he does and acts on the things that he thinks about. It's 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 tough, yeah. But I love it. When you're done shooting, you know, is is it ever you know some days tougher than others to sort of get out of that headspace to sort of shake that off? Yeah, it is. It is. There's. I mean, some days, especially. <clears throat> Um, in the first series, when there's more of, of um, seeing Spectre in the act, you know, and actually carrying out these these horrific crimes, um, those days were, yeah, that was tough. You know, it, it's, you're with some you know lovely actress, and and you're having to do kind of horrible things to her. And um, you know, I was always very apologetic, and, and and when I finished, I was always like, I always felt like oh, I just need to like get myself as far from that headspace as I can, you know. Um, and I would do it, I would try to, on those days particularly, I'd try to like, you know, go for a run or play football or soccer with my mates. And um, and yeah, I just try to, and to, you know, exert yourself from that, um, that headspace. But yeah, the, some days were darker and harder to get over than others, I think, yeah. And those scenes you mentioned, uh, you know, you know, where where Paul is terrorizing his victims, uh, you know, you know, what are those, you know, like? Do you try and keep things light between takes, you know, when you when you're shooting scenes like that, just to sort of make everyone comfortable and 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 try not to become overwhelmed by it? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, uh, you know, I'm all for. I understand why some people are. Um, you know their approach to acting is is method and and um, I I personally it's whatever works for you you know and for me personally uh, especially playing a character like that you know I don't want to be particularly method you know uh, I want to be able to to release myself from those you know uh, the constraints of his character when when I can so yeah you know it's not in my character as you know Jamie I guess to to um, to be that dark and to um you know i like to try to lighten the mood whenever i can um you know i usually hopefully i'm the sort of person who likes to laugh a lot and have fun and be around other people who are making me laugh so um there's definitely lots of that and uh, often instigated by me because i personally felt the need to break away from the headspace when I can when I can but the lovely thing about that job is you know it's it's we shoot it in Ireland in Belfast where I'm from you know all the crew you know sound the same as me and sort of speak my language you know what I mean and it's just it's a nice camaraderie and I feel like it's just like being at home again and that's a really lovely thing so we actually for for a show where we're dealing with such dark subject matter and there's so much intensity involved in the scenes and what's happening, we do have a lot of fun on that set as well. You know, it is it is good fun and you know, I want it to be because it's I want to enjoy work, you know, and I enjoy I love it um, between you know action and cut, but I wanna I wanna have fun when when all the other parts are happening as well. So you know, we have fun on that that job. Uh, you know, in the first two seasons of the show, you know, it basically told two parallel stories. You know, there was yours as Paul Spector and then Gillian Anderson's as Stella Gibson, who is the detective investigating. Uh, and the season two finale finally brought you two together in, in a big way. Uh, what was it like to finally bring those characters, you know, face to face for, you know, like that for, for basically, you know, the, that interrogation scene? And then, I mean, you two were so closely involved in that one. Oh, sure. 
I mean, it was such a treat for me because, you know, I'm a massive fan of Gillian, you know, um, and uh, and when I got this job, I was so excited, the idea of working with her. But of course, in the first series, you know, apart from one fleeting moment, we don't have any scenes together, really. It was always a sure sign to know if someone had actually watched The Fall or not, because it'd be, people would be like, oh, I, lo I love you in The Fall. What's Gillian like to work? With, I'd be like, oh, no, I, <laughs> I have one tiny moment of this on screen with her in the first series, um, and then obviously the way the story's written, and it's the cat and mouse aspect, and it's back and forth, and yeah, as you say, the parallels, and you spend time with Spectre's character, and then Gibson's character, and they're very much layered like that. Um, so to finally, I think for the audience as well, to finally have the two, you know, protagonists come together you know, meet head to head um, with everything that's at stake when they meet. Um, I think we knew for the audience that that would be such a big moment, but also for for me as an actor and Gillian as an actor, I mean, it was such a treat to actually get to go like, to, you know, head to head with each other, uh, uh, you know, especially the, you know, the interrogation scene. And I, I mean, it was also like, God, what a scene to get to do it on. You know, it's not like some little moment that's, I think it's one of the longest scenes in like British television history. You know, it's uh, you know it's twelve, thirteen pages of solid dialogue. I think it it runs at nineteen or twenty minutes, maybe even more than that, which is a long time. You know, but um, it was definitely my favorite day uh, of shooting the whole of the fall series one, series two. It was just that and getting to see Gillian's work up that close. And I loved it, man. Loved it. And, you know, since those characters were, were so separate from each other and, and, you know, you didn't really have many scenes together, you know, except that one fleeting moment uh, in the first season, uh, did you and, you know, Gillian Anderson have much interaction on set at all? Or, or were you, like, almost completely isolated from each other during, you know, the, that previous period? I think I've got to know Gillian so much more doing press for the fall and, you know, doing, like, screenings and, like, Q&As and, you know, other press than I did, you know, filming. I mean, we, you know, especially in the first series, it was always very much like a Gillian Day or a Jamie Day. And, um, and you know, they very rarely cross. Now and again, there'd be like half a Jamie Day and then that feeds into Gillian Day. So I'd see her in the makeup trailer briefly and be like, hey, you know, like, how is it, how's your side of things going? Um, and, but that was nice about the second series. We got more time together. And um, Gillian's great, man. I mean, she's... First and foremost, for me, I just think fantastic, amazing actress, and um, you know that that she, you know that is so evident in her work in this and in everything she's done. But you know, I think especially in the fall, um, but she's so fun as well, and she has this persona as Stella as being so like icy and hard, uh, sort of hard to penetrate and understand and complicated women and and can't really hold down a relationship and all that sort of stuff and, um and it's there's a sort of sternness to that and it sort of seems unapproachable um i think Gillian, um as a person can you know maybe give that off because she's played a lot of characters who you know are kind of very strong women and, and that guys are maybe a little bit you know fearful of and stuff but actually for my money you know she's really sweet and funny and easy and has a really giggly childish side to her that comes out you know often on set and um she's great man i can't say enough good things about her she's brilliant uh, it was announced that uh, the fall will be coming back for a third season uh but season two ended on on a big cliffhanger for your character i know he was shot and, and possibly dying it seemed uh do you yeah. know anything about the upcoming season like when it starts shooting again have you gotten any scripts yet uh i haven't but funnily enough um, I'm in South Africa at the moment filming something else and uh, I have a sort of 40 minute drive to work every day and I, on the way back from work today and um, we just wrapped a couple of hours ago um, I spoke to Alan Cubitt the creator of The Fall the whole way in the car because I haven't spoken to him a long time and I, I needed a sort of update about you know uh, what's happening what his plans are and everything but yeah that is the plan to do a third series and yeah I mean I, I'm, I obviously can't give anything away about you know uh, my part in it and where it's going to go and everything, but um, there's definitely going to be definitely going to be more. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Twitter sphere saw that I'd be talking with you today, and you know the fan response was just immense. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, you know, has the big international fan base that that you seem to have, you know developed over the last you know couple of years has that been a big developing a big adjustment for you? 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, to be honest, you don't feel that, you know, it doesn't feel that palpable until you're sort of online. Um, and so I am sort of actively trying to avoid, you know, social media and stuff at the moment because it's then, then it, it suddenly just feels like, you know, it's real. It's like, there it is. It's like, there actually are all these people that are interested in what you're doing because actually in your everyday life, it doesn't seem to have a huge effect. I guess, um, you know, I, I, we, we live a pretty quiet life, my wife and I and our baby. So it's kind of like, you know, you don't almost, you know, you're not massively aware of it. You know, you just go about your day and it's not like we're being chased down the street or anything. I mean, you know, it's obviously a bit more interest and you notice people sort of whisper and here and there, but, but it's nothing, it's nothing that's sort of out of control at this stage, which I'm, I'm very pleased to say. And also what's just been good recently is that I've been uh, consistently working and I finish this and I go poof, almost straight on to another gig. So it's kind of like when you're working, you're just so like in that and you're just doing the work and you're coming home and you're being with your family and then you're going back to work and you're in this kind of bubble. So, um, you know, I, I am aware of it, but you're far less aware of it than I would be if I was sort of actively on Twitter and I'm trying to <laughs> just take a, a step back from all that because um, I'm not sure how healthy it is. I thought I'd uh, ask, you know, a few of the, the questions the fans raised about the fall. Uh, among them, a lot of you know, a lot of them are interested in, in, in knowing if you, you know, regardless of what's actually going to happen, if you were yourself were, were writing it, uh, how would you like to see the story end for Paul? God, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I've never asked myself that question. I have no real, I definitely don't have an instant answer. I mean, it's funny, uh, with that show, he's such a heinous, horrible, evil man. But I do think Alan's so clever in the way it's written that, and I, so many people have said this to me, that you are almost rooting for him to get away with it, which is really weird, <laughs> you know, considering you're as an audience you're privy to, to to what he's up to and the horrible things he's done and the lives that he's ruined and, um but i've had so many people say that there's something about it that you want him to get away with it um i don't think i want him to get away with it you know um i don't really have much sympathy for the guy um but uh so i you know i guess you know i think it's got to be a dramatic ending and whatever happens to him um, but I haven't really thought too far beyond that, no. Uh, appropriately, we, we at Gold Derby are, are all about awards, uh, and you know the Emmy season is coming up, and, and actually Anthony from Amy Dornan Online was, was asking, what would be your reaction if you actually won an Emmy for the fall? Uh, I mean, that's a very far-fetched idea. I mean, <laughs> I think... Uh, uh, I mean, God, look, awards are great, man, because... You know, you put a lot of work in, and and you you, you think you've um, you know you feel proud about what you've done often with things, and sometimes no one cares, and and now and again certain institutions care, and and that's a lovely thing. Even to be nominated for any of these things is a massive enough deal. You know, I wouldn't even let myself get into the world of. Uh, of what it would be like to win all you know, things in the nominations, and it, it, you know, you like. I want. I always thought I was one of those people who thought that, that I didn't care about that kind of thing. But then you do sort of get nominated, and you're like, look, it's a nice thing. But and that for me, that's as far as it needs to be. Like a nomination's enough because you get nominated against these people that you have huge admiration and respect for, and even to be in the same sort of sentence as these people is sort of enough, you know. Um, so yeah, look, of course I'd be pleased, but that's you know. You know, you just got to, yeah, I sort of don't let myself think about those things too much. Uh, you know, Hannah wanted to know, uh, you know, you know, noticing Paul and Stella are both, you know, sort of alpha characters personality-wise. Uh, do, do you find that there are similarities between them? Yeah, I mean, I do to an extent, yeah. And I think, you know, in the in the first series when we have the big telephone call on the bridge at the end of the first series and... As Spectre says, you know, we're very like you and I and, you know, both driven by a will to power and, you know, all these sort of aspects that he is drawn upon that thinks are similar to, to Gibson. 
So um, I think there's an element of truth to that. I mean, I think he certainly, and whether Gibson believes it or not is another thing, but I think she probably wouldn't want to admit, but maybe there are some things, some things that he said in that phone call that maybe do make sense to her. Um, but certainly two people who um, know what they want and sort of <clears throat> won't let me tell, but those things that they want happen to be very, very different, you know. But um, yeah, no, I, I would agree with that to a point, yeah. Christina Wydak uh, asks, uh, you know, how would you describe Spectre's thoughts and feelings about uh, about Gibson compared to how he views other women? Like, does he see her as a worthy foe or, or maybe as just another victim? I think there's a fascination there. You know, I think there's um, strength to her and an allure to her that, that he probably hasn't witnessed in, in, in too many in too many women. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, does does she a potential yeah victim? And um, you know, my thing about that is like Spectre very much has a victim type, and um, I Gibson Gibson you know, delivers on some of the aspects of, of is I think he respects her a lot and her mind and how good she is at her job. But he also feels that he's more powerful than her and that she will never catch him. That's the thing with a lot of these guys who commit, like, you know, their the arrogance is sort of beyond belief. You know, they honestly think that they're just totally invincible and, you know, immortal and they can get away with anything and they won't be caught. And I think even when, even when in the, in, you know, when, when they have him and he's like in prison and he's being interrogated, I still think there's an aspect of Spectre that thinks he can somehow get out of this or, you know, get away with it, which is sort of fascinating, you know, that they, these, their, their minds work like that. Uh, Diario Dornan uh, wants to know uh, what's the best and worst part of playing Paul Spector? I think the best part about playing him is that, you know, as actors, you want roles that, 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 are, that are complex and you want to play characters that are multi-layered and that you can really, uh, you know, delve into and discover aspects of the character that are outside of your comfort zone or you know that 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 you've never sort of tried to navigate in those waters before you know and Spectre gives that in in bulk you know there's so much about him that is so conserved and um Actors love that because it's a lot to chew on you know you're not just playing some straightforward guy and so I love that I feel so thankful you know, every day when I'm playing that character, that I that it's me, that I'm the guy who gets to get my teeth into such a sort of monster character. So I think that's definitely the best. But the worst bit is, you know, sometimes it's I, it's not easy living with the the subject matter and being the, you know, being the vehicle for that kind of brutality. Um, that can weigh on your conscience and, and it has weighed on mine at times, you know, often. And, uh, uh, you know, but again, you know, I guess you have to, it's, it's, it's all pretend and um, that's the kind of way you can deal with it, you know. But it's, it is a uh, subject matter that doesn't come that easy, you know, uh, for me or for a lot of people. So um, I guess that's the hardest bit, yeah. Uh, Patricia Varange uh, wants to know: uh, Do you think Paul really loved his wife, or or was he just basically basically using her to as sort of a cover for for who he really is? I think that's a really good question. Um, I I would probably the latter. I would say, I would say, I mean, yeah, there's definitely an element of using her to to be able to. Um, put up a bit of a front that like he is this normal family man and he's got a good job and he's got a wife and two kids and from the outside he lives a very normal existence and he looks like a, not a very threatening 
character and help civilize him to to get on with the other side of his life which we all know about so i think there's an element of that i i wouldn't think i don't think he he loves her i mean in the second series he says he's incapable of love you know and uh that he he, he hates everything and everyone including himself you know so that's a pretty, pretty big statement so it's hard after saying something like that to like you know to imagine that he he loves anyone i would argue that there he has a certain amount of love for olivia for his daughter uh, or certainly that would be the closest thing to love that he is able to express would be my way of saying it. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think he, I don't think he loves Sally Ann though. Uh, you know, Diane Affolder wants to know if you think uh, doing The Fall uh, you know, has made you a better actor for, for other roles you play. It certainly tested me in ways that I hadn't, you know, uh, been tested before. And, um, you know, I guess I hadn't done... I hadn't... I'd done a bit of work previous to The Fall, but I hadn't done... Uh, any, yeah, I hadn't done roles that had pushed me that far before or had asked me to just, you know, explore that side of myself before. So, um, I guess you learn something in every your character being an actor, I think. Um, but it's definitely pushed me the full, and um, yeah, I guess going going forward, it can only have, have helped, uh, you know. You, if you yeah, as I said, you've got to learn something. You've got to. I always want to. You know, and I feel very at the moment. Um, and you hope that with every job you learn, you learn something that you can then carry forward into into you know, later work. So, yeah, I'd I'd have to say it probably has yeah. Uh, you know, you've, you, you know, a couple of your best known roles now, you know, this and Fifty Shades of Grey, you know, you know, playing these dark characters. Do, do you long to maybe do like, you know, go into like a, just like a light, frothy romantic comedy or something after this? Yeah, do you have one? <laughs> I could write one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, look, uh, you know, what you said earlier about like, um, I'm usually pretty laid back. Um, guy i like to have fun you know i'm not like some uh, i have my moments of being very serious and you know when i need to be and i'm very focused when i'm at work and everything but um outside of work i'm uh i'm probably you know would err on the lighter side of life let's say and um so yeah i definitely love the idea of playing someone that isn't so um you know conflicted I think, um, although you know, I do, I do love that, and I, it's not, I will still seek out roles that you know, that with that are characters who, are, you know, have that kind of conflict in their life and, and behave a certain way as a result of it. Um, but you just want to play interesting characters, and you know, uh, it doesn't mean there can't be interesting characters in something that's a bit lighter. So um, yeah, no, I definitely like the idea of it. Also, you're, I'm an actor, you know, you want to be able to express every facet of that and, and show you know show that you can do you know other roles that aren't you know so dark you know of course so um you know you could find yourself i could have found myself only i, I could have done like three romantic comedies in a row and then yeah i could have someone saying would you not like to do someone who's a bit meatier and maybe get your teeth into a little bit more someone who's got a bit of darkness so you know I'm just happy to be doing, you know, good work that that's, you know, that that people want to see, you know. So I'm not going to make too many complaints about uh, my lot at the moment, but um, yeah, I definitely down the line like the idea of doing something a bit a bit lighter, yeah. Well, I want to uh, thank you very much for for talking with me today, and uh, congratulations on the, the the you know the first two seasons of the fall, and and uh, you know I and a lot of the, you know the Your Internet fans and and viewers are really looking forward to to season three. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Thanks, man. <laughs>